Uh, calcium, uh, many people ask, isn't calcium uh, or isn't cow's milk necessary for strong bones? I can remember when my son was in grade two, some kids at school were saying, well, if you don't drink milk, um, you're just going to be a pile of blood and skin on the floor. You're not going to have any bones. He came home, mommy. <laughs> So it's, they, there's this very strong prejudice in our society that, that milk, cow's milk, is necessary for strong human bones. And, and I would say it is no more necessary than moose milk. Um, cow's milk has a lot of calcium. It's got about 300 milligrams per cup. But moose milk actually has 600 milligrams per cup. And we don't call it an essential food. Uh, you know, if you look at pre-agricultural human history, humans averaged one to 2,000 milligrams of calcium per day without a single drop of cow's milk. And, and in my opinion, it really defies rationality to assume that, the, that, that, the, that, that, he, that any species would require the milk of another species for its survival. You know, each species designs its milk uniquely to help their offspring achieve the growth they need to achieve. You know, a 65 pound calf or whatever, uh, we're blowing up into however many three or 400 pound cow in, in a fairly short order. And that, you know, that milk is, is uniquely designed to achieve that task. Human milk is designed for human infants and to me, it just is, is uh, you know, it doesn't make logical sense that any species would need the milk of another species. And calcium rich, we can get our calcium from plants. And calcium rich plant foods offer some pretty impressive advantages over dairy. So they're generally low in total fat, they're low in saturated fat, and they're rich sources of vitamin C and K and folate. They're rich sources of magnesium, potassium, and boron. They're rich in antioxidants and phytochemicals. And so all of these things, to me, make plants a preferable choice. If we look at our recommendations, recommendations for calcium are quite variable around the world. So they're, they're lower in the UK. I think it's about 700 milligrams there versus 1,000 to 1,200 in North America. And so it's 1,000 for, for most adults, and for females, 51 to 70, and males over 70, it's 1,200. Uh, so if we look at calcium intakes, and so again, the red is the non-veg, the blue is the lacto-ovo, and the green is the vegans, uh, you can see the lacto-ovo vegetarians are well above that 1,000 uh, milligrams a day in both the Adventist Health Study 2 and Epic Oxford. Uh, the omnivores are, are pretty close to that thousand as well in Adventist Health Study 2 in Epic Oxford. But in the Taiwanese uh, Buddhist Health Study, uh, they, they're actually only at 542. Then if you look at the vegans, well, in the Adventist Health Study 2, they're very close to the thousand. But in Epic Oxford, it's only 582. And in the Buddhist Taiwanese study, it's 644. So it's actually higher than the omnivores in the Buddhist Health Study. Why would you think that would be? Well, of course, in Asia, dairy is not a staple. And so intakes would be lower, but they would be higher in the vegetarians because they're probably eating more tofu and more dark green leafy vegetables and things that are relatively high in calcium. If we look at the studies on vegans and bone health, we have about 15 studies that have assessed mineral density in vegans. And eight actually reported um, uh, lower, uh, about 10 to 20% lower uh, total bone uh, mineral density among vegans, and seven found little difference in the bone health of, of vegans compared to other dietary groups. So about half and half saying, you know, they, they have worse and, and, or there's little difference. And if we look at fracture rates or fracture risk, we have three studies, one showing increased risk, uh, uh, rates, one showing increased fracture risk, and one finding no difference. So this is a little concerning for people who are eating entirely plant-based diets. But here's what's interesting. This is the Epic Oxford study. And you can see over here, I don't have a, a laser pointer, but the 1.3 means 30% more fractures. 
Um, so this is fracture rates in vegans compared to meat eaters. However, when they looked only at the vegans eating at least 525 milligrams of calcium a day, look at this, there was absolutely no difference between the meat eaters, the fish eaters, the lacto-ovo vegetarians, and the vegans. No significant difference whatsoever. But, 45% of the vegans had intakes under 525 milligrams, and 76% of the vegans had intakes under 700 milligrams. And, and so basically, the take-home message here is that bone health of vegans can be compromised when calcium intake is very low. And vegans need to consume, it seems like they need to consume at least 525 milligrams of calcium per day, and probably, preferably, should try to meet the, the RDA for calcium. And this is my personal uh, show-off picture, but anyway, this is me. And uh, this is my personal experience. So I'm 61 years old. Um, I uh, have a very strong family history of osteoporosis. My mom had osteoporosis in her 50s. Uh, and I've been a vegan for about 31 years. I had a bone mineral density done. I haven't had one for about 10 years, but I had one after about 20 years uh, being vegan in, when I was in my 50s, uh, because that's about when my mom got osteoporosis. And my bone mineral density was two to two and a half standard deviations above expected for my age. My doctor said, um, the, he showed me my chart. My bone density was too high to plot on the graph. There was an arrow at the top of the chart. And he said, I'm absolutely shocked. He said, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I can tell you what I'm doing. I make sure I get enough vitamin D. I make sure I get enough calcium. I make sure I get enough boron and magnesium and potassium. I make sure my diet is well, well planned, but I also exercise because exercise is a message to your bones to stay strong. And so that's really, really important. I love this cartoon. It's this. This guy here is saying to this, uh, this uh, guy who works for the, uh, for the government, good, good, and now the dairy. He's removing meat from the food groups, and, and he's asking him politely to uh, remove the dairy. And I thought, isn't, isn't this funny? Because that's exactly what the Canadian government just did. I wonder if he was behind it. <laughs> so there are lots of reasons to get calcium from non-dairy sources. Lactose intolerance. 70% of the world's population is lactose intolerant. Milk is one of our richest sources of saturated fat, which has been strongly linked to cardiovascular risk. Um, it increases risk of prostate cancer, of, of, of ovarian cancer. It increases risk of acne. It, 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 there are a lot of people that are allergic or sensitive to it. It, it um, often contains hormones and pesticides. It has been associated with increased risk of type 1 diabetes. And then, of course, there are all the concerns about what we do to cows to get their milk. And this is a, everybody knows the story in this room, I'm sure. But it is not a very pretty story. Uh, and then, of course, there are huge environmental concerns as well with, you know, the number of, of uh, cows to produce uh, this milk for the human species. Um, so, but we do need to make sure we include sufficient calcium-rich plant foods in our diet. So the low oxalate leafy greens like kale and broccoli uh, and turnip greens, things like almonds and chia seeds and, and sesame seeds, figs and uh, tofu that's made with calcium and, and the blackstrap molasses and we can include uh, the, a lot of legumes are fairly rich sources and the non-dairy milks that are fortified with calcium are also very rich sources. So, you know, 300 milligrams in a cup often can get people to where they're, they're aiming to be. Uh, in uh, some of the books I've written, like Becoming Vegan, uh, Comprehensive and Express Editions, we developed a food guide that I think was pretty much foolproof. So if you follow the guide, you, you get what you need. And in the middle of the guide, you can see we, we actually illustrate the calcium-rich foods within each food group. And, uh, and, and so that's helpful for people too. And then there are things you can do that, to make sure you're getting sort of the bone builders in your diet. It's not just about calcium, it's about potassium, magnesium, boron, and zinc. The richest source of boron in the diet is flax seeds. 
Uh, the key vitamins, vitamin B12, C, D, K, and folate. Uh, and vitamin K, a lot of people say you need K2 for your bones. You do, but K1 from kale is converted to K2 uh, in, your, in your intestinal tract if you have a healthy gut microbiome, which most people eating plant-based do. Uh, isoflavones from soy may help uh, with bone health. Uh, fruits and vegetables are strongly associated with better bone health. Essential fatty acids are needed and sufficient protein. Do you remember the days when we used to say uh, protein causes bone loss, don't eat, you know, keep your protein as low as possible. Now we know actually we need to make sure we get sufficient protein. There are really two faces of protein. We had, we had some things right, but not all things right back then. Uh, protein does increase urinary calcium excretion and it increases acid production, uh, uh, especially certain types of protein. Those have negative effects on bone health. The positive is protein promotes calcium absorption and it enhances bone building activities. It maintains muscle mass and bone structure. And the net effect tends of protein tends to be somewhat favorable, except when you have inadequate calcium intakes and very high protein intakes, like a paleo diet. So paleo diet, no dairy, lots of meat. And so they would, it, it could uh, definitely work against them with the amount of protein they eat. Sufficient protein in plant-based diets is important for bone health. And we have a study, this is the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2, with over 33,000 participants showing that people eating legumes at least once a day had 64% fewer hip fractures than those eating legumes less than once a week. And those eating meat analogs even, this is salty things, and we know salt increases calcium excretion, so this was a surprise to me. But even those eating meat analogs had 49% fewer hip fractures than those eating meat analogs less than once a week. You need to be aware also of bone robbers. So the factors reducing calcium absorption or bone building capacity are oxalates, phytates, excessive preformed vitamin A from supplements, uh, excessive alcohol intake, and uh, caffeine. Factors ex uh, that, that enhance calcium excretion, too much salt, high metabolic acid load, and piles of protein, like people eating 150 grams or more a day especially. So I remember um, the, the um, advertisements in women's magazines back in the 80s um, by the dairy industry, there was one advertisement that said, oh, sure, plants have calcium, but it's not bioavailable. Only the calcium from cow's milk is bioavailable. And so that was how they were trying to sell their products. But is the, is the calcium from plants bioavailable? Well, actually, we absorb about 32 to 34% of the calcium from dairy products. It's about the same for tofu that's made with calcium but we actually absorb about 20 to 30% from things like sweet potatoes, legumes, and soy milk, and we absorb the most from low oxalate green vegetables like broccoli and kale and Chinese greens and turnip greens and mustard greens. We absorb the least from greens that are high in oxalates, like spinach and beet greens and Swiss chard. There's so much oxalates that the calcium is bound to the oxalate and it just goes right through. So we can't get, we still get about 5%, maybe 10% of the calcium from these foods. So then some people say, well, what if I eat a salad that has spinach and kale? Will the spinach inhibit the absorption of calcium from the kale? And no, it doesn't. In fact, the, we still absorb some of the, the calcium from the spinach, but, but there's no problem with it negatively affecting uh, the calcium absorption from the kale. So bone-wise choices in terms of diet, we want to meet our RDAs for calcium. We want to include some calcium and vitamin D fortified foods. And we want to design the diet to ensure optimal intakes of all of those 
bone building nutrients, but perhaps most important is getting a lot of weight bearing exercise. And maybe for people who are at risk, who are starting to have low bone density, to even consider wearing a weighted vest around the house to give you that extra weight bearing. My recommendation would be 60 minutes of exercise six to seven times a week. So daily exercise, an hour a day, every day.